Hey guys, Josh here with another tutorial, but this time we are in my editing suite. We're using Final Cut Pro 10, and today we're going to be showing you, or I should say, I'm going to be showing you how to chroma key in Final Cut Pro. This is a very simple process. Not only am I going to show you how to chroma key in Final Cut Pro 10, I'm going to show you how to make it as realistic as possible. Now, let's go ahead and pick our clip. Now, when recording a green screen uh, clip, right, or footage, when you're getting that footage, uh, I strongly recommend that you keep the green screen, uh, you know, evenly lit. As you can see here, it's pretty evenly lit. Uh, you want to stay away from wrinkles. We have some wrinkles here. Uh, wrinkles are prone to cause shadows, and shadows cause un uneven lighting. So as you can see here, this green is darker than that green. But I'm going to show you how to overcome these obstacles in editing, so that way uh, it won't be such a big problem. Now, when you're recording this, not only does the lighting have to be nice and evenly lit uh, or set up, uh, the green screen has to be pulled pretty wide and stretched pretty wide so that way there's no wrinkles. Uh, not only you have to worry about those things, but you have to worry about the frame rate that you're shooting in. I strongly recommend that you shoot at 60 frames a second and not 30. Why? Because if someone is talking in, in, the, in front of the green screen and they're using their hands and making some fast gestures, uh, 30 frames a second can cause some really, you know, can cause some motion blur. Uh, and in editing, uh, Final Cut Pro, especially in other you know, editing software, won't be able to key out the color perfectly because of that motion blur. 60 frames a second, however, eliminates more of that motion blur and creates more of a realistic chroma key effect. So, I'm, as you can see right now at the bottom of my screen here, we're shooting at 2997. Um, so you will see a little bit of that motion blur and perhaps maybe a little bit of green shadowing, but probably not. Let's see how it goes. Uh, so I strongly recommend shooting at 60 frames. That's, you know, perfect. I have never had issues with 60 frames a second. So I'm supposed to be editing a sales video for my client, David, here. So let's go ahead and drag and drop that clip into my uh, storyline here. Right? So this is raw footage. Uh, he requested that I put him in front of this background here, this loft background. It's a very pretty background. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and drop that clip, the loft clip, under David right here. Okay, so it's under him. I'm going to make sure it is the full length of David's clip. All right. Okay. Now once I've done that, I can go ahead and go to my effects tab here. Wait for it to load. And search for Kier. Here's Kier. Click on Kier. Drag and drop and watch it automatically just chroma key him into the lock. Now, does it look realistic? Not at all. Uh, we're, we got to do some color correction and we got to stretch out the loft so it fills the whole entire screen. So to do that, it's very easy. Just click on, click on the loft background, then click on this transform tab here. Uh, hold down the shift key to evenly stretch out the clip in all directions and just drag out. Or oh, I'm sorry, uh, you want to hold the command key, not the shift key. Just drag it out until it fills the whole screen. Click done. Now, not only the color correction, you know, doesn't doesn't match the background. The background just seems like a background. It looks like a backdrop. Uh, so we need to give some depth to this. So we'll worry about uh, the color correction last. Let's go ahead and give it some depth to increase realism. So what I like to do, um, if you're shooting an interview, you, a real interview in front of a real background, let's say, uh, you notice that the background is slightly blurry. That is called depth of field. You want to make sure that the subject is perfectly in focus and the background is not really in focus. That way you, you know the subject clearly from the background. So what I like to do, I like to apply what is called the Gaussian blur. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. Make sure you're clicking on the all. Here we go. And let's drag and drop it. Okay, it still looks pretty fake. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lessen the Gaussian blur by going to the effects tab, then going to Gaussian, and uh, putting the slider amount to less. Just about 
there looks pretty good. Now what I really want to do is play with the colors. Now, uh, this looks like a white balance issue. So meaning that his skin is too white and it looks like if you were really in front of this background, his skin should be a little bit more, you know, it should be warmer. So what I like to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my white balance uh, effect. For it to load here for a second. Go ahead and type in white balance. And I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop my white balance plugin onto David's clip. Now, obviously, Final Cut has its own white balance plugin. I just have a, a different white balance plugin I use, but they're all basically the same. So when I drag and drop that white balance plugin, I'm going to go to my, I'm going to click on this uh, on David's uh, clip here. Make sure it's highlighted in yellow. Then I'm going to go down to my effects tab and scroll all the way down to white balance. So I'm going to go down to temperature shift in Kelvin, and let's mess with the slider. That looks like it's going cold. So let's go the other direction and let's warm him up. There we go. That is the color that we want. And you can also adjust the hue. All right. So there you go. That is how you do it. And as you can see, his skin is a lot warmer and it matches way better in the background with the background. But as you can see, the motion blur here, since this was shot in 2997, you can see a lot of the motion blur and you can see a little bit of the green. You can see a little bit of the green there. But, you know, you have to be, a, you know, really, really focused on the specifics of this clip to actually even tell. Uh, most people won't tell. I think 99% of the people who watch this video won't be able to tell that there's green there. But if you're an editor like I am, you will be able to tell easily. As you can see around here in the hands, you can see a little bit of the green. But if you shoot in 60 frames a second, I guarantee you, you will not have this green outline here. So let's also talk about the uh, specific adjustments in the chroma key or effect. I'm going to go down to my effects tab, make sure that this clip is highlighted. And what we can do, we can actually select a sample color. Uh, let's say you're shooting in front of a red screen. You don't know, red screen, there's blue screens. You just select the color here and you just drag and drop a, a sample a color and it will automatically key it for you. So that's really, really helpful. You can also adjust the strength of the effect. Uh, and what I really like to do is mess with the composite levels. Uh, so when I click on this tab, you can see that David beca became white solid white and the background became solid black. So the trick is is to keep your subject in pure white and your background in pure black. That means you have a proper key. But again you can have this is the perfect way to see if there's any problems with your chroma key. So you can mess with these effects here uh, to get a cleaner cleaner key, fill holes, spill level, it, you know it all depends on the look you're going for. Right now, as you can see, I have a perfect key. No black spots in, you know, black basically means a mask or a hole. So if David had a hole in his head, uh, that means that the background would be able to be shown through his head, and you don't want that. You want David to be solid white or your subject to be solid white. So that's, that's what I recommend. There's also an invert option where you can actually turn... Uh, David into the background and have the background uh, be normal. So that's actually what they do with the Apple commercials. So that's kind of cool. But we don't want the invert option. And then we can go back to the normal composite view. And that is that. You can also tighten up the edges uh, by selecting the edges here. And it'll actually clean up the chroma key even more. But too much and the person stops looking realistic. So a few last tips to remember, you want to make sure that you uh, color correct the footage by using the white balance or the color correction plugin with the Final Cut Pro, it comes built in. Uh, you want to make sure that you give your background a little bit of blur if you want that depth of field realistic look. 
And you also want to make sure that you shoot in 60 frames a second or higher to uh, clean up the motion blur and make sure that there is not any green, no green outline around the, the subject. So these were, uh, you know, quick, easy tips to have a clean green screen uh, effect and to apply the green screen is actually very, very simple. So if you have any questions, please email me at info at capturethemomentum.com or comment below. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.